are ready for the interview let us begin so welcome to the mock interview uh, please tell us uh, brief, briefly about yourself your qualifications your experience and uh, what have you been doing after you completed your uh, btech uh, although you have done it in 2020 only so and some of the hobbies main hobbies ek minute So my name is Usha, and I was born and brought up in a village in Khetri Tehsil of Jhunjhru district in Rajasthan. And I did my schooling from Jhunjhru district itself. There on, I moved to Delhi to do my electrical engineering from Delhi College of Engineering. And I graduated in 2020. And since then, I I have been preparing for UPSC civil service examination. And so my hobby is to do yoga and pranayam. Okay. So Nisha, you are from Rajasthan and Jhunjhunu. Yes, right? sir. So tell me, what are the USPs of Jhunjhunu? What are the notable features uh, of Jhunjhunu area, uh, Shekhawati, and uh, you know area as you call, uh, which you would call it as the unique selling propositions of that area? Uh, sir, there are several things which are prominent in Jhunjhunu, or uh, or I may say Shekhawati. So, if I talk about Jhunjhunu, then the first and the foremost thing is the contribution of the people of Jhunjhunu in defence forces. So, Jhunjhunu stands at number one in the entire country uh, in the number of the people who have been marshaled and who have actually contributed in defence forces. Then, secondly, sir, uh, uh, there is uh, there is a place known as Pilani in Jhunjhunu. so it is famous for the birlas and also for the premier educational institute known as bits that is the birla institutes of science and technology which is an engineering college it is internationally famous so uh, thirdly i can talk about the prominent industrialists who have their origin in jhunjhunu for example birlas dalmias singhanias podars and so on then sir there are also uh, places of cultural significance in jhunjhunu and sekhawati overall so in jhunjhunu there is a, a temple known as rani sakti temple and in sekhawati i can talk about the salasar balaji and khatu shah so these are the places of cultural significance okay. so nisha you are an electrical engineer yes sir and uh, <clears throat> you have heard of tesla yes sir so i would like to know as an electrical engineer what scope do you find of electric vehicles visa vis the traditional vehicles in the next 5 years in india uh, so as can also be seen by the uh, push given by the government of india for the electrical vehicles so electrical vehicles overall are beneficial for the uh, country and for the uh, economy uh and the environment because they are less polluting uh, the uh, harmful particulate matters and other gases emitted by them are very negligible as compared with the traditional uh, vehicles but sir uh, as of now uh, the government has just started giving it a push so uh, uh, in the coming times we might see that the demand might increase for these uh, vehicles but for these government at the same time has to also incentivize people for going uh, to buy these e vehicles uh, nisha you have heard of uh, akshay tritya akshay tritya no sir you from rajasthan have not heard akshay tritya you must not be knowing by this name is the day when auspicious for marriage marriages yes, yes sir what is it called there is a day in may like any other festival they called akshay tritya in which marriages take place child marriages also happen in rajasthan have you yes. heard about it yes sir yes sir so yes, tell sir. me in rajasthan still the child marriages are held you know in abundance yes sir now those who Go for child marriage. They still advocate the pluses, the advantages of a child marriage, yes. and they cite reasons for this 
particular system or custom which is continuing. Now, since you are from Rajasthan, what do you think has been the compulsion on the part of you know, the families who believed in child marriage? And what is the change that you have seen in the last few years about their thinking that they should not go into a child marriage? Uh, sir, Rajasthan is one of the states where patriarchal mindset is predominant. So this is one of the foremost reasons. Apart from that, whenever a girl child is born in any of the families, uh, then it is considered a financial burden by the parents. So that is one of the uh, important factors which pushes the pa parents to marry off the girl at an early age so that they get uh, they, they could save themselves from the evils of dowry. So that is one of the most prominent factors. Also, so parents consider that uh, uh, why, uh, why should we uh, invest more in the education and the, and the health of a girl child? Because ultimately, we will have to marry off her one day and she'll go to another family and she would not bring the return on the investment to us. So these are the factors which pushes the families to go for child marriages in Afghanistan. So what is your view? Uh, sir, I think it is an evil practice and it should be completely banned off from the society. It is both bad for the uh, girl child and also for their upcoming uh, upcoming uh, children or the off offsprings. Because if a mother is not healthy, if a mother is married off at a young age, then the also the child born would also not be very healthy. And it's uh, uh, if we see it at a mine uh, at a micro level, then it's uh, it's uh, it's uh, not advantageous for the girl and for her child and for her entire family. And if I see it at a larger picture, then it's not also advantageous advantageous for the entire society. Because if the uh, people or the uh, if the citizens of a country are not healthy, if they cannot uh, perform properly, then it would not, you know, in a way contribute uh, better to the economy. Right. So, Nisha, I'll now pass on to Mr. Khanna. He will ask questions. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon, Nisha. Good afternoon, sir. So, Rajasthan and you did your uh, B Tech from Delhi. Yes, sir. Okay, so let's talk about Delhi. Yes. Oh, before that, you are an electric uh, engineer. Yes, sir. And um, you you did your engineering in which year? Sir, in 2020. I graduated in 2020. 2020. Yes. So why do you want to become a civil servant? What What is it that drives you to this particular job? And not to the technical side that you you have acquired qualification for. Uh, so there are several reasons which uh, which I think pushed me to opt for this profession. So uh, the dream of being a civil servant had been always there in the back of my mind, even even before I opted for engineering, because uh, my father is a government teacher and he has been associated with the government machinery. That is one thing that inspired me to be a part of the government machinery. So secondly, I come from a very humble background. So I have, you know, in a way witnessed the difficulties faced by the people here in rural areas. So I think uh, uh, if I get a chance to be a part of the government machinery, then I would be able to uh, connect with the issues faced by them. And also at the same time, like when I grew up, I also had the exposure of the urban area. So I, in a way, also understand some of the problems of the urban areas and all these uh, issues faced by the people uh, drive me uh, somewhere to uh, go for a profession wherein I can have a direct contact with the people. Okay. And what qualities you have to become a good civil servant? Why should you be picked up and not somebody else? Uh, so firstly, I would say I can work smartly. I can uh, uh, make uh, make efficient planning so that I can get the desired result in a shorter span of time with less uh, and optimal utilization of resources. So secondly, I am very honest and very dedicated. And at the same time, I'm also very compassionate. So lastly, I must say that I can connect with people easily. So I can uh, understand the grievances of the people more easily. And all these quantities make me, uh, maybe they might make me a better candidate. Mm -hmm. Think about qualities that will make you into a good civil servant, okay? 
so if you need to polish up your reply you can later on so let's uh, talk about covid times and uh, gender gap especially in the women side the gender gap has gone up women are losing employment yes uh, all that was achieved through uh, making education as fundamental right somewhere is uh, also getting hit so if you are uh, posted in a district what would you do to improve the position of girl child of women and girl students especially to improve stem so three questions clubbed in one what would you do to improve gender gap then uh, promoting uh, education and stem Uh, sir, I would first of all look this issue in a holistic manner because anything which is any problem which is related to women starts from her birth itself. So whenever a girl get, um, takes birth, uh, from there on the problems, uh, the problems like the uh, infanticide and malnutrition and then the education and later on the employment starts on. So first of all, I'll emphasize on the uh, the uh, the prominent uh, prominent uh, flagship scheme of the government of India that is Beti Padhao, Beti Bachao, Beti Padhao. So uh, I uh, depending on the area of my posting, uh, I would first uh, in a way uh, try to aware the uh, society in general, and I would uh, also connect with the people who are the uh, major stakeholders in the process. For example, let me simplify. I... You are posted in Junjun, okay? okay. in district junjunu so now you have an environment which is known to you yes sir problems and covid related impact on them now yes change uh, if you want to reply go ahead sir uh, although uh, junjunu uh, has a very high literacy rate if compared with other districts of rajasthan but the child sex ratio is not very uh, very appreciable in, in the district so i would focus on the beti padhao beti uh, beti padhao beti bachao beti bachao beti padhao abhiyan and then i would connect with the sarpanches of all the villages so that they can spread the awareness campaign among the families and among the villages that would be the first step then sir secondly i would uh, i would uh, also uh, aware the uh, aware the villages and the other other uh, like, uh, villages in general about the education and the about the health of the girl child so uh, the proper implementation of the mid day meal scheme in the villages that is important and then uh, sir i would also focus on the schemes which have been uh, already started by the government of rajasthan for example uh, rajasthan government provides bicycles right. to the uh, girl child passing no, out it's okay don't yes. don't give example now yes. come to the second point covid impact on gender yes. gap Yes, sir. Uh, due to the uh, in the backdrop of COVID, sir, uh, reverse migration is taking place. So the men folk have been coming back to the villages and to their uh, home, home, home district or home places. As a result of which, women are losing jobs. So I would focus on providing such jobs which are uh, uh, which are women specific, so that first of all they can we can establish a level playing field in the district. so that i can uh, so uh, i can uh, focus on the jobs for example any of the msme jobs for example uh, the uh, uh, the textile good enough good enough good enough any other point you want to say then third question stem what will you do to any other point you want to add there and sir i would also from time to time organize motivational speeches so that i can encourage women to stand up for their own rights so okay okay now come to stem how will you improve women uh, uh, participation in stem yes sir so sir as we are saying that the uh, uh, the uh, enrollment uh, at the at present times is increasing of women in stem that is science technology engineering and mathematics but then again the issue comes at the time of the uh, hiring of the uh, employees in uh, in these specific employments so uh, as also it is that many women are uh, employed in these sectors so so uh, the uh, schemes like the kiran which is specifically for women 
uh, for the scientific uh, like for promoting the scientific scientific education so sir again i would focus on the implementation part and again the awareness among the women and their family to uh, take up the opportunities which are provided to them by the government okay uh, yoga is uh, your hobby yes so sir. what uh, four asanas would you suggest to overcome the anxiety during covid times through yoga or pranayam uh yes just, sir just name four yes, don't sir. elaborate yes sir so uh, first of all i would uh, focus on the breathing exercises so i'll emphasize on anulom and vilom anulom vilom kapal bhati and sir if i talk about the asanas sir then i would talk about uh, surya namaskar uh, which in itself encompasses a lot of uh, different asanas and sir then i would uh, talk about uh, bhastrika or brahmari any of these okay yes you are electric engineer tell me about uh success of introduction of ibm in reducing the npas in the power sector now sir could you please repeat the question again insolvency and bankruptcy uh, code ibc yes sir hmm so has ibc helped in addressing the issue of npas in power sector okay are you aware about uh, power sector npas uh, yes sir mm-hmm. so what is what is the extent and what needs to be done to reduce power sector npas uh, sir i am not aware about the exact numerical figure uh, exact numerical figure but uh, most of the response in uh, in most of the states of a country are in distress and the reasons are manifold for example uh, so uh, the uh, the subsidies provided by the uh, by the governments to the consumer then power bill fridges are also there so these results into the uh, distress in the discoms okay okay so <clears throat> what reforms would you suggest in discom Uh, so first of all so there should be uh, uh, there should be rational uh, utilization of subsidies in the electricity sector so there should be a streamlining that is uh, in which sector the electricity is being utilized and what uh, wo- up to what level subsidy can be provided so that is one so secondly we can offer more technology for example we can go for smart metering and we can go for master metering so yes okay last question is uh, um what is india's target in clean power mission uh, so uh, india has uh, targeted around 450 gigawatts by uh, renewable energy by 2030 okay thank you over to you mr sumit okay good afternoon sir so you are fresh graduate from uh, delhi dtu Yes, 2020 yes. okay and why you choose pub, uh, public uh, political science and international relation as your optional subject secondly and uh, can you explain why political science is an art yes sir. first of all uh, the interest in the subject appealed to me to go for this subject because i can relate with the current happenings which are happening in both india and both internationally so secondly i wanted to go for a subject wherein i do not need to opt for a coaching class uh, and i can uh, complete the syllabus in time and on my own so the easy availability of material of political science in the market also was another factor to, for me to opt for the subject and also the second question political science is a art uh so because uh, there have been various uh, scholars in political science and they have put put forward their various theories and these theories are uh, uh, like many of the theories are pulled apart but still they provide us uh, different uh, different analysis and different understandings which can be related to the contemporary happenings many a times so this makes political science a art which political thinker do you admire the most Uh, so Hena Arendt. Why? Uh, so first, because she is women, I can relate with her. That is that is just one of the reasons. Apart from that, sir, she the way she writes her writing and the uh, clarity of uh, uh, and the um, the strength which she has to write about the atrocities which were committed at that time during the time of Hitler on Jews. So they 
they are the uh, reason to uh, for me to go for henna and and apart from that sir the way she describes power and the notion of power in the uh, in the public sphere how can the uh, how can the general public utilize power in its own favor to bring out the deliberative democracy mm -hmm. to bring out the participatory democracy all these writings of henna and appeal me the most okay <clears throat> comment on the statement pakistan suffers from identity crisis yes yes sir. yes comment on the statement your views okay sir uh, so uh, pakistan uh, so there are various stakeholders in pakistan for example the government of pakistan and there is also <clears throat> military in pakistan and um, also as witnessed from time to time and also according to several reports it has been alleged that um, that military has a upper hand in <clears throat> pakistan and pakistan also sees india as its eternal rival so all these factors make pakistan suffer from identity crisis pakistan always tries to prove it that it has a upper hand with regard to india so it suffers from identity crisis and it cannot be resolved until and unless uh, both the parties that is india and pakistan work together by hearing out all the issues properly by the way of proper negotiation and also the military should be uh, there should be some sort of uh, designation or i can say uh, arrangement in pakistan wherein the military do not interfere in the matters of the civil government or uh, it only interferes as and when required by the government so all these okay uh, in your opinion when will india achieve its target of 5 trillion economy uh, sir had there not been the uh, this pandemic of covid 19 india could have easily achieved the target of uh, uh, 5 trillion dollar economy by 2025 but now as many of the reports are suggesting and also as witness that the there has been a slow down in the economy so sir it might take several years and uh, sir right now i cannot comment because maybe if the if we could manage the situation properly in time then uh since it's not a uh, it's not a uh, slow down because of other reasons it's only because of the pandemic so demand would catch up as soon as the economy reopens so so it's not um, i can comment right now but okay. it would okay. definitely take more than more time now. okay so one last question from my side uh, tell me about delhi education model in three bullet points uh so the government of delhi it uh, incentivizes the teachers so that is one teacher incentivization so secondly uh, there has been uh, optimal utilization of technology in the uh, schools of delhi and uh, so thirdly uh, so since delhi is a, a, a cosmopolitan city so there have been uh, mingling of uh, students from different backgrounds so there is a spirit of uh, tolerance and there are several qualities which can be easily imbibed in such atmosphere that might not be available at other cities if compared with delhi so okay good nisha i pass on to chairman sir so uh, nisha couple of questions uh, you have heard of quad yes sir uad Yes. Sir. So tell me why is China so scared of Quad, and uh, why is India so proactive and excited about uh, participating in Quad and taking it forward? Uh, sir, Quad initiative has been started by the uh, by the US government, wherein the other participants are India, mm -hmm. Japan, and Australia. so so uh, in the contemporary contemporary times as we have witnessed that there is the world order is in a state of flux and china uh, is trying to be more aggressive and more assertive uh, everywhere in the world but more specifically in the indo pacific so uh, it might be a cause of fear for the freedom of navigation and for proper rule based order and law internationally so usa is trying to contain china so also there are several other reasons for example usa was a hegemonic power and still it is a hegemonic power so uh, the uh, the uh, the 
spontaneous rise of uh, china in such a short span of time is also in a way making uh, usa wary of its rise so to to preserve its position uh, usa wants to contain china and at the same time so india being a neighbor immediate neighbor of china suffers from many atrocities committed by china for example as seen uh, as recently we witnessed the uh, eastern ladakh uh, border stand of uh, border stand of with china so india also wants to contain china and may uh, and make it sure that its national interest is ensured so all these factors apart from that sir all the four countries which are a member of quad are democracies and china doesn't favor democracy uh, so uh, uh, com- if i combine all these factors they are trying to uh, that, that that is the reason these countries are coming together and giving uh, and trying to revitalize quad again okay tell me nisha my last question Yes. Uh, you have been hearing lot of opposition in the media from some political parties about criticism on making of central vista. Yes. Earlier, there was a criticism on spending money on Statue of Unity and uh, decision on bullet train. So, uh, what is your take, like as a as a citizen? uh how do you see all these uh, developments and the criticism uh what substance uh, it has and whether uh, you know it is more for political reasons what are your views um, so in my personal opinion uh central vista, vista it's a project wherein 20000 crore rupees have been allotted to this in the budget but sir at the same time uh like if i compare it with the present situation going on like the situation of covid 19 pandemic so uh, sir uh, there has also been a budget approval for the health system so it is in no way taking out the money from the health to the central vista and sir at the same time uh, if we focus on this project then it would provide uh, first of all it is uh, it has the contract has been given given to an indian company that is tata company and so secondly it would also in a way create numerous employment for the people so that would be beneficial for the country but yeah at the same time as of now seeing the uh, situation created by covid 19 pandemic in the country we could maybe defer the uh, project for uh, uh, for some span of time otherwise the project is a good both in its spirit and its intention and so apart from this the other uh, other things for example the bullet train and the statue of unity so they uh, so the statue of unity it signifies our historical past which is also to be embraced embraced at the same time because only when we uh, are proud of our history and about the people who fought to provide us freedom if we, only if we are proud of them we can be good citizens we can truly follow all the duties and we can try to uh, make our uh, make our nation more more enriching and so the bullet train projects so it would uh, be beneficial maybe the cost might be high but then it would be beneficial to bring in the technology uh, the advanced technology into our country and also it would reduce the travel time so sir overall these things are benef- beneficial for our country but right. uh, yes sir so nisha we have completed from our side any subject any topic which we may have missed out and you always wish that some question could have been asked from this topic would you la- <laughs> would you like us to ask any question uh, sir from junjunu uh, from junjunu there is any particular question which you might ask me nothing sir from junjunu if you might ask me from <laughs> junjunu yes <sir>. okay <laughs> i started with junjunu i learned with junjunu so you mentioned lot of things about junjunu very rightly but you missed out on the uh, you know those havelis yes, of the yes sir so which is the haveli that you would rate the best in jhundu uh, so there is this sekshariya sekshariya haveli in navalgad so mm-hmm. i would rate that and apart from that all the havelis which are located in mandawa so they are famous for their fresco paintings and they are unique in their own way in depicting the Uh, in depicting the culture of the region around. So answer, answer me another thing that if Jhunjhunu has such attractions, why are tourists in Rajasthan not coming in big numbers to 
Shekhavati area. I'm not talking of religi religious tourists. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, there are various reasons for this. So first of all, there are connectivity issues. So uh, the, if the connectivity can be enhanced, then there would be more inflow of the tourists. So secondly, uh, the focus on advertisement has not been that has not been up to that level so as to bring the influx of tourists. So sir, focus on adver advertising could be done. So thirdly, uh, since the uh, the uh, people to whom these havelis belong, they have migrated from the region and these havelis are taken care of by the other people which are hired by them. So sir, proper care and uh, proper care of these havelis have not been taken. So I think government could do its bit, could do its bit by uh, focusing on the proper, again, on the uh, re, uh, re, uh, rebuilding or the uh, uh, rebuilding of these havelis that could be done. And so the lastly, but the most important factor is the safety of the tourist and uh, safety and security is very important. So uh, that is not, uh, although it is there, but then again, there are, uh, there are incidents wherein the uh, tourists are looted by the uh, by the uh, people uh, of the region in terms of high prices and other issues. So that if that issue is, if that issue is also tackled, then I think definitely there would be more inflow of uh, tourists in the coming time. So Nisha, thank you very much. We have finished our interview. Okay, Nisha. Yes. Uh, first of all, tell me how you are feeling now after the mock. I'm feeling good. Okay, and what is your own impression of your own replies? Great. You were asked a uh, plethora of questions, and uh, uh, tell me what is your impression because first assessment is by the candidate himself, and then we'll tell you our point of view. So I think I need to work more on articulation. On? Articulation. Articulation. Yes. Sir. All right. And, uh, and so uh, a little bit of more data and information so that I can substantiate the statements. Right. So once you have analyzed this articulation, bullet pointing, yes, sir. Uh, restricting your replies within the given time, but then positivities are that um, you tend to be, tend to appear to be a very honest and rooted candidate. Rooted in the sense that you know ground realities, as well as I found your knowledge on several aspects. I quizzed you from electrical engineering, power sector, to STEM, to women, to yoga and you seem to be having very good knowledge so just keep it up your uh, content was good your knowledge base is good only thing is that you can probably think of bullet pointing your replies so that you can in the given time you are able to get more questions okay i like your reply on anxiety coping through yoga, that was very good. And uh, STEM, it was a very long question. Three questions embedded in one, but you attempted all the three. And uh, NPA in power sector, look at the figures. I think it's important being electrical engineer. Then DISCOM reforms, you were good. So keep it up, wish you all the best. You are doing very well. So Nisha, uh, to add from my side, uh, even for the sake of repetition, you were excellent, did extremely well. You were confident, you were in total command, you were smiling, you fielded the questions very well, you, your quality and content of answers was very nice. Uh, I would like to cite one or two examples about the questions which I asked and the answers. So the question, the reply that you gave on the child marriage Akshay Tritiya uh, was very analytical. And the answer that you gave uh, 
about the vista and bullet train was uh, very balanced when i say balanced it means you were not scared of being critical about the part that central vista could be deferred for some time to covid is there but you defended the bullet train and statue of unity it was not that in one go you criticize the government or all the you know these uh, uh, initiatives so you picked one by one and analyzed them and ultimately gave a very balanced view so i have not been able to find uh, too many uh, point where you need improvement but i would certainly give one or two but before that i would also like to reiterate that see there are two things uh, some candidates have knowledge and some people have the understanding yes. so you showed an understanding of all the subjects and topics uh, which you uh, were asked from you and that means you are in the higher orbit of knowledge because you know the depth of it and as anna sahab has rightly used the word rooted i think it applies 100% to you uh just one point uh two points the body language was good your pace of delivery was good you were not fast you were not slow one thing about when you go for the actual interview you must preferably wear a sari yes sir which is a good attire for women candidates and uh, uh, secondly is uh no there is no second sorry so i i have <laughs> so i would end by saying that the 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 panel has rated you very high in the best possible bracket so far and we would put, we have put you around 67 68% uh, which uh, in our scheme of things uh, is you know the highest we have so far interviewed almost 50 candidates around and we have given 70% as the highest that to i think two candidates and one has got 68% so you are the fourth i would say in 68 to 70 bracket so all the very best if you have done your exams main exams well and if you score well um, you would uh, uh, and and you perform as good as you did today uh, i think we can see you in in the in the final list certainly any question any uh, thing you would like to know from us nisha uh yes sir so actually i am concerned about the uh, questions which might come from electrical engineering if the technical questions so i'll tell you some of them were asked from you this electric vehicles is the first thing that will flash mm-hmm. so you be ready for more supplementary questions about uh, electric vehicle the project which elon musk is trying you know in india how would the traditional corporate sector into you know traditional vehicles how would they react how would the you know the management of batteries the charging stations the infrastructure that is why if you remember i asked you about the next 5 years Yes, so you should also try to see and work out find out from researchers i mean i think these research bodies keep doing all kinds of things in the next 5 years what share it would be as you also mentioned data and all i would have liked your answer if you had said ki sir i have read a study uh, research report uh, which which projects that by 2027 or whatever 26 5 years hence the share of traditional diesel petrol market uh, driven car would be around this much and electric vehicles would have snatched 5% 10% 50% of the share and the reason is that with the policies that the government has uh, changed or made more proactive more uh, electric car friendly and with tata is also getting into it with foreigners having a uh, an eye on indian market 
and uh, but infrastructure may take some time so you can project but certainly after 5 years sir i can say that you know the share is going to increase if these things are matched you have to give conditions you are not projecting you are not speculating yes sir you are giving quoting some report you are not speculating from your side yes, sir. these are i think it should be 5 to 10% <coughs> you have to quote some research and you will find one second uh, related to your area is the power sector reforms yes sir uh, which have happened almost more than uh, 25 30 years have passed and uh, what has been the impact of those power sector reforms from state electricity boards you are from rajasthan yes, maybe uh, before the time you were born or around that uh, there used to be rajasthan state electricity board then unbundling took place under power sector reforms we had now we have different companies so how have these companies unbundling been useful in terms of power sector what are the transmission losses uh, what are the uh, you know uh, utility bills how are they recovered is it better than before you are in rajasthan since i am from rajasthan cadre there is so much of electricity theft power theft yes, in sir. rural areas so since you are from that area i suppose if any panelist also happens to be from there they may ask you what about power theft there's a lot of power theft in rajasthan so these could be related to power and uh, of course all other important you know i think uh, i think these are the two main things that will flash in anyone's mind <laughs> Yes, yes, just just one more thing to add to what chair chairman has said. Yes, yes. Power sector reform. Why is it so essential, and why is it being talked of? Is because the total outstanding has grown to one point four one lakh crores. Now look at this figure, and unless these reforms are carried out, uh, it's going to be one of uh, very very difficult sec sectors. to handle yes. okay with subsidies with government coming up with number of policies so that is the kind of figure we are talking of 1.41 lakh crores another point nisha i have thought of just now is you know the hydro electric projects yes and an environmental issues you know time and again you keep getting protests from so how do you think then also the renewable power yes sir so what are the other uh, yes. renewable and not renewable how is india performing you are again from rajasthan so what is the solar energy you know how how would solar energy be used for our then climate change you know Yes, use of more non renewable you mentioned gigawatts and all everything that climate change uh, commitment of india so these are all you know electric pollution hydro electricity all these things environmental aspect visa vis power projects could also be one of the issues yes, and then international solar alliance yes sir yes sir how many countries have now joined You so, see, the membership is growing every day. Okay, sir. All right. So all the best, Nisha. Yeah. Uh, one more question. Uh, sir, uh, what type of questions can be asked asked by me uh, related to Delhi? Related to Delhi. Yes, sir. Like, uh, is there any chance of the uh, historical angle being asked by me, or the cultural aspect of Delhi? the delhi is the hub for of news so there will not be certainly a political news a political question but certainly at the time when you are appearing in the interview maybe a week or 10 days before any major incident which may have happened like last year i remember when we had mock interview delhi has had you know the roids yes sir right before that delhi has had elections then it had uh, you know the the c double a was the main main issue at that time and then, trump was about to come to delhi during that sorry so the president of america was about to visit delhi during that time in february yes 
president visits are not so they they do, people don't put questions now in today's suppose if i had to ask you about delhi i would have asked you the oxygen management of covid oxygen management by delhi government and maybe center in delhi how have they you know performed and their stand up between them how has it affected the public how do you think delhi has managed uh, covid well because you know it had a sudden spark and sudden jump so this was the latest about delhi so anything which happens say about 10 15 days before your actual interview that should be in your focus okay. otherwise they will not ask ki delhi mein kya kya cheeze dekhne wali hain wo sab aayi thi and so my last question so related to my optional political science and international relations so do i also need to revise the theory once again of the static portion of the political science if i remember mr sumesh one of the panelists had asked you some questions on political science so my answer is yes but it will not be in terms of the subject in terms of the application part see your international relations subject is a very tempting subject for for uh, the the interview board because there are so many international matters which so you should be prepared more about what are the internal what are our international relations vis a vis india us ussr economic union sarc asean neighborhood first policy act east act east policy quad breaks g7 g20 climate change you know un's role who's role yes, these are all hot topics of today okay. is it fine yes sir so all the best thank you sir and it was very good for me to have this interview okay all the best all the best all the best So may I please leave now? Yes, sure, sure.